baseball fans, this is Wade Hoyt with Bob Wolf. In a few minutes, the New York Yankees and the Cincinnati Reds will be at it in the third game of this 1961 World Series. Brought to you by Gillette, maker of the 195 adjustable race and the remarkable super blue blade that gives all but unbelievable shaving comfort. Foamy, the cream of all instant flat. And right guard, the new power spray deodorant for men. And Chrysler Corporation, where engineering puts something extra into every car. Chrysler Corporation, with the live new cars for 62. To thank you for using their products, Gillette and Chrysler will also present the 1962 Rose Bowl game over most of these same stations. The 1961 World Series has arrived in Cincinnati, and as a matter of fact, it arrived by car, plane, railroad, and bus in sections. The Vanguard arrived from New York following Thursday's games. Fans and press and radio and TV, magazine and movies and news representatives have been arriving from home and abroad ever since. And this afternoon here is the World Series open for the first time in 21 years. It is just a gorgeous day, a really tremendous day. And not a cloud in the sky, warm, delightful, and the city is very, very excited. This broadcast is authorized under broadcasting rights, granted by the Commissioner of Baseball, solely for the entertainment of our listening audience, and any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the description and accounts of this game without the express consent of the Commissioner is prohibited. Yes, indeed, today's game is to be played right here at Crosley Field, which has been the home of the Cincinnati Reds for as long as the oldest citizen can remember. The field itself here at Crosley has undergone various changes. At one time, the batters batted toward the home plate instead of away from it. And speaking of the home plate, it was once located some 20 to 30 feet directly to the rear of its present site. It has been gradually moved forward as the necessity for more seating capacity has increased. There have been but three modern World Series played here. This is the fourth. The disastrous World Series of 1919, then the second one against the Yankees in 1939, with unfortunate results for Cincinnati, and the third one, the 1940 Series, when the Reds defeated the Detroit Tigers in seven games. A series which, by the way, saw Freddie Hutchinson, the present Cincinnati manager, pitching for Detroit. So 21 years have passed since Crosley Field has been gaily dressed. 21 years since pennant fever gripped this Ohio River City. 21 years of pennant famine. And now the Queen City, as Cincinnati is called, has responded to their National League champions with an intensity which beggars description. The New York Yankees, on the other hand, have, as American League champions, and very often during that time, been virtual tourists, traveling to St. Louis, Milwaukee, Brooklyn, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, to play World Series. All of the National League to either win or lose in the Classic. And today's game is the third in this series, and each team has won one game, one game in which each team has demonstrated reasons why they are champions. Wednesday with the talented left-hander Whitey Ford, supported by two home runs, Howards and Scourins, and defense, great defense by Cleet Boyer, the Yankees were strictly Major League Baseball at its best. The Cincinnati Reds came driving back on Thursday to take advantage of the breaks. They gave Joey Jay six runs with Coleman supplying a home run punch and Jay holding the Yankees to four hits. The same totals for the Reds of six runs on Wednesday would have made Jimmy O'Toole a winner on Tuesday. Or rather, uh, uh, six runs on Thursday would have made O'Toole a winner on Wednesday. Jim pitched fine ball, uh, but he was slightly outpitched by four. The Reds so far have outscored the Yankees eight runs to four and about hit the Yankees 11 runs to 10. Boyer has played brilliantly for the Yankees, and Eddie Casco and Elio Chacon have sparkled for Cincinnati. Today it comes down to a battle of two right-handers, as Bob Perky, the knuckleboard artist and winner of 16 games, will pitch for the Reds, while Bill Stafford, Bill Stafford is slated for the Yankees. Stafford relies on low stuff, curves, sliders, and so forth. We'll talk more about those in just a moment. Friends, when you give your United Community campaign, the entire life of your community is affected for the better. Needy families are aided, recreation supplied for both young and old, help is provided for children and teenagers, many health services aid the aged and the handicapped, our armed forces 
and veterans are assisted, the United Way means one more campaign for many health and welfare services. So give the United Way. You'll feel better. Your community will be better because of it. Of course, the big news of today is that the Yankees' famous center fielder, Mickey Mantle, is to return to the lineup. Mickey Mantle will be playing for the Yankees, and he will be batting fourth. And, of course, a man such as Mantle, who has been a great ball player, who batted 317 with 128 runs batted in and 54 home runs, second only to Roger Maris in the American League, must make a big difference in the psychological effect of the New York Yankees and also uh, might have some effect on the Cincinnati Reds. Uh, but his presence in the lineup, of course, is bound to have an increased determination on the part of the fine New York Yankees. We said we're going to talk about a little bit about Perky. Perky will pitch for the Reds as a butterfly knuckleball, somewhat similar to that of Hoyt Wilhelm of Baltimore. It is difficult to hit and almost as difficult to catch. Willie Mays, for instance, went all the way to second base after striking out swinging at Perky's knuckleball, which wound up as a pass ball against the backstop. Perky is from Pittsburgh, traded here from his own hometown a few years ago. He's a right-hander, tall, intelligent, clean cut, and a gentleman. He's a clutch pitcher. He has beaten the top clubs in the National League, such as Los Angeles and Milwaukee, when the Reds needed the victories the most. Bill Stafford is a 23-year-old right-hander for the New York Yankees. He was born in Catskill, New York, up there near Albany. He now lives in Petersburg, Virginia. As I said, he's a right-hander. And in 1961, Stafford won 14 and lost 9. He uses that slider with great effect. He's not afraid to throw breaking stuff when the count is against him, sort of two balls and no strikes, or three balls and no strikes. And uh, he has a lot of confidence in himself. He lost five games this season by one run, low score games. And Casey Stengel has credited Stafford with getting the Yanks on the final road to the pennant back in 1960. A very, very confident young man, so it promises to be a good pitcher's battle. Right now, the Cincinnati Reds and the New York Yankees are lining up along the foul lines. The Yankees lining up uh, to, right along the first baseline to the right of home plate, and the Reds have lined up right along the third baseline to the left of home plate. A, a band is proceeding to the... Uh, well, just in front of the backstop and near the microphone located some 30 feet behind home plate. In a few moments, there'll be a moment of silence in memory of Powell Crosley Jr., the former president of the Reds, who passed away in March of this year. And then there'll be the raising of the colors by the combined military color guard under the direction of Captain Jim Wall of the United States Air Force. And Marion Spellman and Bob Braun will sing the national anthem when time for that arrives. I see they're at the microphone at the present time. Now the moment of silence for Powell Crosley, Jr.
top hitters in the series so far are Bobby Richardson of the New York Yankees and Edwards of the Cincinnati Reds. We'll speak a little more about those in just a moment as the third game of the 1961 World Series is being brought to you from Crosley Field in Cincinnati. Yes, those two boys, Richardson of the Yankees and Edwards of the Reds, are batting 500. The highest batting average for a single World Series? Well, on page 28 of the Gillette World Series Encyclopedia, you'll find Babe Ruth batted a fantastic 625 back in 1928. Man, I'll tell you, this Gillette book is worth owning. Contains World Series records, humorous drawings by cartoonist Willard Mullen, bright and authoritatively written history of the World Series, every fact and record in the $5 book. This pocket size is just a Gillette exclusive. You can't buy it anywhere, but it's yours free with the $1.95 Gillette adjustable razor at the regular price of $1.95. The adjustable is the razor that you set to suit your own combination of skin and beard. With it, you get a dispenser of those remarkable Super Blue Blades. Get your free Gillette World Series Encyclopedia with razor set for only $1.95. The pause here, 10 seconds for station identification. Are you mixing with the best? It's a tongue of fishy with the yellow label. It outsells all the rest. The genuine fishy with the yellow label. Tastes better tonight. Feel better tomorrow. Saratoga with the yellow label. At the game, at your favorite eating place, or at home with friends, you're always sure you're mixing with the best with Saratoga Vichy. Switch hitter, he'll bat left-handed the day, day against Perky. Mickey Mantle, who missed the first two games of the series because of injury, will be in center field batting fourth. Yogi Berra, the left fielder, batting fifth. Elston Howard, catching, batting sixth. Bill Scourin, Scourin, the first baseman, batting seventh. Cleet Boyer, Cleet Boyer, at third base, batting eighth. Bill Stafford, S-T-A-F-F-O-R-D. Bill Stafford, the pitcher, who has won 14 games and lost nine, will do the pitching for the Yankees. For the Cincinnati Reds, Elio Chacon, second baseman, is the leadoff batter. Eddie Casco, the shortstop, is batting second. Beta Pinson, the center fielder, is batting third. Robinson, Frankie Robinson in right field today. Robinson in right field today, batting fourth. Gordy Coleman, the first baseman, batting fifth, bats left-handed. Wally Post, the left fielder, the right-handed hitting left fielder, will bat fifth, sixth. Post is batting sixth. Gene Fries, the third baseman, who bats right-handed, is batting seventh. Johnny Edwards, catching, who bats left-handed, is batting eighth. And Bob Perky, the knuckleball artist and right-hander, will be the pitcher for the Cincinnati Reds. He has won 16 and lost 12. The home plate umpire calling the balls and strikes. Frank Umont, U-M-O-N-T, behind the home plate. Augie Donatelli of the National League at first base. Ed Rungi of the American League at second base. Jock O'Conlon of the National League will umpire third base. Shag Crawford of the National League is down the left field line. And Bob Stewart of the American League is down the right field line. Taking the field. And my colleague, Bob Wolf, who does such a magnificent job of broadcasting for the Minnesota Twins, will start the ball game. Bob, call yours. Thank you, Wade Hoyt. Hi, everybody. What a glorious day for this game this afternoon. The weatherman has certainly cooperated. A most enthusiastic crowd here in Cincinnati. Crosley Field is just jam-packed as we get set for the first pitch of the afternoon. And there goes Bob Perky on the way out to the mound. Bob Perky, 32 years old, a knuckleball pitcher. This past season, his record 16 victories and 12 defeats with a 3.72 earned run average. He had 13 complete games this season. 
He has had previous experience with the Pittsburgh team. He was traded at the Reds before the 1958 season, and he proved to be one of their greatest acquisitions. In four seasons at Cincinnati, Turkey has won 63 games. 17, 13, 17, and now 16. He started the 1961 All-Star Game for the National League at Boston. And Perky is out there now warming up with Bruce Edwards, with Johnny Edwards. And Edwards, incidentally, is the gentleman who came through in such a clutch performance against the New York Yankees at Yankee Stadium in the last game played there with two hits. And in both cases, it came after he was intentionally brought up to the plate. The preceding batter threes have intentionally walked. Kirky, by the way, was speaking to me just before the ball game. I took a look at his fingers, his fingernails, and I noticed that they were very short. And Bob told me that the reason for this is that he actually likes to have fingertip control of the ball. He likes to feel it go off his fingertips, and so has his nails cut very short. He pitches off that first knuckle, as the knuckleball pitches do. It's actually more of a fingertip ball. And the knuckleball occupies his pitching, oh, sometimes over 50% of the pitches that he throws up. Bobby Richardson, who was 4 for 8 for the New York Yankees in this World Series, steps in. Stocky, right-handed batter, all set to face Bob Perky, and the first pitch is just about to get on the way. Perky looks in to get the sign from Johnny Edwards. The outfield plays Richardson slightly around to a left. Here's the pitch. Swung on. It's a ground ball going out to Casco. Shots up all of it. Throw to first. One away. Brings up Tony Kubek, who is one for seven in the series, a left-handed batter. And incidentally, just as soon as we have a moment or two, I'd like to describe this ballpark for you rather fully, because it does have its tricky spots, particularly in left field. And I might say also it's a strong sun beating down on this beautiful afternoon, which would give all of the outfielders difficulties. The pitch to Kubek is over for a call strike one. He'll be followed by Roger Maris and Mickey Mantle is in that number four slot in the batting order. Yesterday afternoon, the Yankees working out here, they had a whole brigade of men trying it in left field to get used to the tricky mannerisms of an incline which goes up toward the fence there. The pitch is wide in the count now, one and one, to Tony Kubek. There's one away, we're in the top of the first inning. Bob Perky on the mound. Johnny Edwards doing the receiving. Gene Freeze is at third. Eddie Casco at short. Elio Chicone at second. And Gordy Coleman at first base. Post is in left. Pinson center. Robinson in right. All set to go now. The count is one and one. Perky winds. The pitch to Kubek. Swung on and fouled back behind a home plate. And as you can hear from this crowd here, they're roaring with every pitch. It's been a long time since they've seen a World Series here in Cincinnati, and they're taking advantage of this opportunity to cheer and cheer often. 21 years since the crowds converged on this ballpark here in Cincinnati. And the last series game here was October 8, 1940. The Reds behind Paul Derringer's seven-hit pitching beat Detroit 2-1 to one to win the World Series in seven games. The count is ball one, strike two to Kubek. One away, top of the first. Kubek digs in waiting. Perky starts the windup. Here's the right hand is pitched. The knuckler is wide, and it's off Edward Smith, rolling back about 30 feet or so behind home plate. Two and two. Edwards has earned the right to be in this game because of his fine clutch hitting against the uh, New York Yankees. However, he'd be in there regardless this afternoon because of the fact that he does a particularly good job at holding on to the knuckleball, a very tricky pitch to latch on to. Ready now for the 2-2 two two pitch to Kubek. Here it comes, and there's a slow grounder going out to Chico, and he comes in, scoops it up, puts it a first one out. Steps up and two away in the top of the first, and Maris is 0 for 7. Oh, Roger Maris, a left-handed batter, steps up now. Turkey looks in to get the sign. And we're all set for Maris to bat. Here's the windup, and the pitch to Maris. Swung on, it's a pop-up. Third baseman freeze. Waiting, and he has it. The 
is correct. No runs, no hits, no errors, and no money left. And the score after one half inning. The Yankees nothing, and the Reds are coming up. Yes, sir, they're yelling here in Cincinnati. It's sure a baseball wild town. It's also a red-hot Gillette town. And how they go for that Gillette Foamy Instant Lather. The same is true all over. Today, Foamy is the fastest-growing instant lather in the country. Have you tried it? It's a world of speed and convenience. All it takes with Foamy is a touch of the nozzle, and you have rich, creamy lather right at your fingertips. Full-bodied lather that keeps your beard drenched through the whole shade. Your razor glides easily, leaves you feeling clean and refreshed. Is it any wonder that Foamy, with K34 antiseptic, is the fastest growing instant lather of them all? So start the day with a cool, refreshing lift. Give yourself a Gillette Foamy shave. Regular size, just 79 cents. Giant economy size, holds almost twice as much, only 98 cents. With the extra coolness of menthol added, same price. Now, while Bill Stafford is warming up, let me go over the ballpark dimensions with you. In left field, it's 328 down the line with an 18-foot wall. This is topped by a screen. Anything into the tall screen there is a home run. Moving over toward the left center, there's a high scoreboard, 55 feet high. Anything up against the scoreboard is in play. Going to straightaway center field, it's 387. And slightly over toward right center, it's 390. From the 390 point to the right field line, the screen there that has to be cleared for a home run is 9 feet high. It's 366 down the right field line. And from the home plate to the backstop behind home plate, it's 78 feet. It's quite a bit of room there. There's an incline starting about 25 feet from the left field wall, gradation of about 6 feet going up there. And there's also a slight incline in right. Here's Ilya Chacon, and the first pitcher called strike one from Bill Stafford. Chacon is one for four, and he has sparkled a field. A right-handed batter playing second base. He'll be followed by Eddie Casco. Stafford winds. Here's the right-hander's next pitch, and it's inside. Moving Chacon back from the plate, and the count now is one and one. Yesterday, in the fielding drills out here, Yogi Berra was testing that left field area. Here's the one-on-one pitch to Chacon. He takes a strike, a letter-high pitch on the inside corner. The count now is ball one, strike two. And Berra said just this morning to me that they talk a lot about how tough it is to play left field in New York City. But believe me, said Yogi, I find it tougher with the sun here in Cincinnati with that grade to go up. If the ball hits the wall and bounces back, it comes back with a tremendous rebound. Here's the one-on-two pitch. It's a strike called in the outside corner. Chacon started to go for it, held back slightly, and the ball broke for the curve strike three. So Chacon is out on a strikeout. That means there's one away in the bottom of the first inning as Eddie Casco, who is two for nine, steps in now. He too has done a tremendous defensive job. A right-handed batter facing Bill Stafford. Stafford is a fine curveball among his other assortment. The right hand to Wines. Here's the pitch to Casco, and there's a line shot to center field for a base hit. Fielded by Mantle, and Casco was on with a single to center field. Eddie Casco, who had the first hit of the World Series in Yankee Stadium, now has the first hit here in Cincinnati. And the batter is left-handed swinging, Beta Pinson. Boyer starts coming in just a bit. The pitch swung on as a fly ball going to left center field. Mantle is moving for it, so is Berra, and it is Mantle making the catch. Pinson flying out to Mantle. They're two away. Casco on first, and here is big Frank Robinson, who is 0 for 6 so far in the series. A power hitter stepping up to face Bill Stafford. Stafford is 23 years old, 
six feet one, 183. This past season, he won 14 and lost nine with a 2.68 earned run average. Among the Yankee starters, he had the best earned run average. Robinson steps in now to face him. Big Frank Robinson, who had 37 homers this past season and 124 RBIs. On first base, it's Eddie Casco. Stafford's first pitch, swung on, it's a high fly foul. Going toward the seats is Boyer, giving up the chase of the ball, is in the left field seats, out of play. We're in the uh, bottom half of inning number one, and there's no score in the ball game. Casco on first, there are two away. Robinson at the plate. Well, this is, although this is Stafford's first full major league season, he's already a World Series veteran. Twice he relieved in 1960 against the Pirates. He had no decisions, but did register a 1.50 earned run average. Robinson waiting. Cap, strike one. There's a throw over to first base by Stafford, and Casco is back at the bag. Two outs. Robinson who stands close to the plate, looks onto the mound, stopped it with the stretch, the pause. Here's the pitch, and it's a strike call on the inside corner of the cut now, strike two to Frank Robinson, as Robinson stoops over, gets a bit of dirt. Beautiful, sunshiny, warm afternoon here in Cincinnati for this third game. Both teams have won one game so far in this World Series. Casco was on first, there are two outs. The count now, strike two to Frank Robinson. The pitch is swung on and missed as Stafford curved Robinson for the strikeout to retire the side. And so in the bottom half of the first inning, the total show, no runs, one hit, no errors, and one man is left. And the score at the end of one full inning, New York nothing, Cincinnati nothing. Back to John Frito, back, 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 back. He makes a one-handed catch and gets the ball back. You heard right. It's the 47 series and Joe DiMaggio coming to bat. Remember what happened? Listen to the actual play-by-play. Joe DiMaggio up. And the crowd well knows that one swing of his back this fellow's capable of making it a brand new game again. Here's the pitch. Swung on, felt it. It's a long one. Deep direction. Back for Sharp Beetle. Back, 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 back. He makes a one-handed catch and gets the ball there. Oh, doctor. The great series plays are yours to live and relive on the pages of the Gillette World Series Encyclopedia. Yours free with the purchase of the Gillette Adjustable Razor Set for only $1.95. This 256-page Gillette book contains highlights and sidelights of every series, plus practically every series fact and record. It's yours free with the Gillette Adjustable Razor and a dispenser of those amazingly comfortable Super Blue Blades, all for the price of the razor set alone, just $1.95. Here now is the second inning, and Mickey Mantle will be making his first appearance at the plate in the series. Manager Freddie Hutchinson of Cincinnati made the fine statement that he would hope that Mantle could get into action just as soon as possible. He said that he wanted to see his Reds play the very best team in the series. He felt that was as it should be, and he wanted to see the fans see the very best all the way through. And here is Mantle, a switch hitter batting left-handed against the right-hander Bob Perkey. Mickey had a 317 average this past season. He takes a called strike on the outside corner. Manor last got 54 home runs this past year and 128 runs batted in. And Mickey has hit 14 World Series home runs more than any other player other than Babe Ruth, who had 15. In batting practice yesterday, Mickey had six batting practice home runs. Declared himself set for action today. Strike one to Mantle, leading off the second. Perky's pitch, the knuckler, is wide of the plate. And the count now is one and one to Mantle. Perky back to the Rosen bag. The outfield, not too pronounced a shift for Mantle. Just a slight swing to the right, not too far. The infield just slightly over, although Coleman has gone closer to the line behind first base. Count now is one and one to Mantle. Perky starts the windup. The right hand is next offering on the way. Is inside, moving Mantle back from the plate. Ball two and strike one. Robinson is playing right field here in Cincinnati and post in left field. Right field is more spacious, although perhaps not quite as tricky. Mantle about her, the count miles, two balls, strike one. Here's Perky's next offering. Mantle swings, sends a fly ball out to short left center. Pinson comes in and has it for the out. (laughs) 
Pascal was going back. Post was coming over, but it was Pinson's fault all the way. Although Beta seemed to start first in and then moved a little bit toward his right. I think that out there this afternoon, you'll find that sometimes the defensive men take the ball at a different angle that they might ordinarily to try to avoid those very sharp rays of the sun, which makes it most difficult indeed. So now, on his first appearance, is flying out to a pencil left center. Here's Yogi Berra, who is two for six, including two RBIs. There's a called strike. Strike one to Yogi Berra. Berra got both of his two runs by the Dinos, full run, which accounted for the Yankees' two runs in their 6-2 loss to Cincinnati. And incidentally, so far in the series, all of the Yankee runs, and they have but four, are as a result of home runs. Strike one to Yogi Berra. Something was flying around near home plate, some little bug or perhaps a little insect of some type. Berra stepped out for a moment. The pitch... And it's inside. The count now is one and one to Barrett. To be followed by Elston Howard. One out on the top of the second. There's no score. New York nothing and Cincinnati nothing. A packed house here at Crosley Field. Now the sigh from Johnny Edwards. Perky all set to work. Barrett waiting. And the one and one pitch about to come up. Score nothing nothing. We're in the top of the second. There's one out. Perky delivers. And he comes in too tight and low. And the count now is ball two and strike one to Bella. Elston Howard will follow. Reds defensively have started two reserves who were stars of their last game in New York. Elio Chacon and Johnny Edwards. Now we're set to go. The count two and one to Yogi Bella. Here's the windup by Perky. The next pitch is inside a knuckler. It goes right by the catcher. Back to the screen. On the count now, three and one to Berra. Who steps into the batter's box for a moment. Now, a step back in. 366 down that right field line with a nine-foot fence to clear there. And beyond that fence, we have the beautiful sun deck here in Crosley Field. The bleacher seats, as they are designated. Now we're set for that three and one pitch to Berra. Here it comes. And it is wide as Berra draws the walk and becomes the first Yankee base runner. And that brings up Elston Howard, who has one for seven. His one hit being a home run. He has one RBI, and he is a right-handed batter. It's 328 down the left field line. 378 to where the big scoreboard begins. And there's an 18-foot wall in left. Elston Howard steps in now to face Bob Perky with one out and one on. As Casco and Chacol now play a double play depth. We're in the top of the second, no score. A look toward first toward Bella. And the pitch to Howard is a strike in the inside corner. That's strike one to Elston Howard. It's interesting to note that the roommate of Joey J, already a winner in the series, is the man on the mound right now, Bob Perky. So they've got a lot to talk over. Count now is strike one to Elston Howard. Dara takes a very slim lead off first, draws a look from Perky, the pitch to Howard, is swung on, and as a pop-up, Chacon, shielding his eyes from the sun, drifts back in a short right, and takes it there. With Vera on first, and here is Bill Scourin, who is one for six. Scourin's one hit, also a home run. He has one RBI. No score, top of the second, two away, and Vera on first base. As Bill Scourin now steps in. The Yankees, on their home ground the season, won 65 and lost 16. But away from home, their record was considerably different. 44 wins and 37 setbacks. Let's see how they fare here against the Reds in Cincinnati's own part. Scowen waiting. Here's the pitch. It's inside. Scowen steps back. The count now is ball one from Bob Perky. He takes his thumb off and rubs up the ball. Scowen is a tough man of defense because he has great powerful wrists. He can hit that ball to any field and hit it even if he's fooled by a pitch. He can still whip that bat around in time to get power behind the swing. Scowen with a ball one count. Barrett takes the lead off first. Perky looks over. The pitch to Scourin. Swung on, and there's a ball going into right field. Robinson comes in and has it. It's on the top of the second. Now runs. Now hits. 
No errors and one left as Scowlin flies out to Robinson to retire the side. And the score at the end of an inning and a half. Yankees nothing, Reds nothing. Paper Me Credit Card Contest winners now leaving for London, Paris, and other world-famous cities. How would you like to fly anywhere, stay anywhere, dine anywhere, and just sign for it? Never get a bill. Well, the world is yours if you win the PaperMate $50,000 credit card contest. You'll fly the finest on TWA Super Jets and just sign for it using your TWA air travel card. You'll stay at luxury hotels like the Royal Hawaiian in Honolulu, dine at famous restaurants in Paris or Rome, and just sign for it using your Diners Club card. You'll have a car when you want it with your Hertz Rent a Car card, gas when you need it with your Shell credit card. When it's time to pay, just pull out your paper made pen and sign for it. Never get a bill. Grand prize is $10,000 in credit or cash, 500 other prizes. Get entry blanks and full contest details now, wherever paper made pens are sold. Bob Wolf along with Lee Hoyt here in Crosley Field, Cincinnati, where there is no score moving to the bottom half of the second inning. And Gordy Coleman, who is two for eight in the series, steps in. Coleman has one home run and two runs battled in. So Gordy Coleman, a left-handed batter, up there, no score, bottom of the second. Bill Stafford looks in to get the sign. Here's the pitch. Coleman swings, sends a ground foul outside of first base. Coleman's fourth inning home run at Yankee Stadium on Thursday was the Reds' first World Series smash since Bucky Walters cracked one off Freddie Hutchinson, then pitching for Detroit in the sixth game of the 1940 series. Coleman the batter will be followed by Post and Freeze. Stafford is a rather fast worker, doesn't waste too much time after getting the sign from Howard. Here's the next pitch to Coleman. And there's a hard grounder deflected off Stafford's glove, picked up by Kubek. No ball. Coleman is safe. A face hit. Ruled by the official score as Coleman set a hard grounder off. Stafford's glove, the ball rolled over on the right side of second base. Kubek, who was moving on the play, picked up the ball over on the Bobby Richardson side of the bag, but it was too late then to make any play to first, and Coleman is on with an infield hit. That brings up Wally Post, who's been hot so far in the series with three for seven. A long ball hitting left fielder. Here's the pitch, and there's a fly ball going out to right center field. Moving forward is Maris, so is Mantle. Maris calls and takes it. The right field will taking it in at right center field. There's one out and one on. Gene Freeze, a pronounced full hitter, who is 0 for 5 in the series, playing third day, steps up. No score, we're in the bottom of the second. Coleman on first, and there's one away. Now Freeze steps in. Boy, the third baseman moves just a bit closer to that line. There's a stretch in the pause by Stafford. The pitch is a little high, and the count now is ball one to Gene Freeze. Very little breeze this afternoon. Perfect afternoon for baseball. No score. Bottom of the second inning. Coleman on first, and there's one away. Free is the batter with the ball one count. The pitch swung on and fouled back behind home plate. The count now is one and one. One further note about that wall out there, left and in center. It's a cement wall painted green. And anything that's up against it has a strong rebound. Close to the bottom of the wall, a few feet up, there's a little wedge and a pipe going along there, which has sort of freak rebounds if a ball's hit against that. There's a pitch inside for a ball. Two balls, strike one. Three is the plate. Johnny Edwards on deck. There have been two hits so far this afternoon, and the Reds have both of them. Singles by Casco and by Coleman. The Yankee infield is playing phrase as a pull hitter with Kubek far over in the hole. Ready for the next pitch. Here it comes. And there's a foul dribbling just off to the right of home plate. 
Count Miles two and two to Gene Freeze. Bill Scowan goes over to pick up that foul ball. Toss it off to the side. Now jogs back to his position. Frank Dumas is calling up the plate this afternoon with Donatelli, the young bat first, Rungi at second, Conlon at third base, Crawford along the left field line, and Stewart along the right field line. And Stafford is getting another baseball from Frank Dumont. Right hander comes down off the mound just a moment, decides to rub this one up, has his glove off, giving it a good roughing treatment. While Gene Free is waiting just in the batter's box, it just up the pants. Now tugs at the cap, now steps in, he's all set. As Stafford looks in now to get the side from Howard. The count is two and two. Coleman on first base, there's one away. No score, bottom of the second. All set to go. Here's the pitch, and it is fouled back once again. Count holds a two and two to Gene Freeze. Yes, so those foul balls have five souvenirs here in this World Series. Stafford again rubbing up the new ball out there in the mound. Now the right hand is set to work. Count is two and two to freeze. Yogi Berra is playing just on the slope of the incline. Here's the pitch. And there's a pitch coming in high and inside. As Freeze started to go for it, held back on the swing. On the count now, it's three and two to Freeze. Who steps out now to get just a bit of dirt. The left field of Berra, who is playing far back and left, stands sideways to home plate, facing that left field line. Now we're set for that three and two pitch. Freeze digs out the plate. Stop and set to work. A look toward first base. Here goes Coleman. The pitch is inside. Ball four. So with Coleman in motion on the three and two pitch. Pitch came in high and inside as Freeze draws the walk. But he got on first and second. And that brings up Johnny Edwards, who is two for four. pitch to Edwards. All strike one to Edwards. Royals on first and second. There's one away. Edwards has two RBIs in the series. A left-handed batter. Here's the next pitch. And there's a ground ball going after Scowron. He goes over, touches the bag himself for the out. He first took a look toward second. Decided to make the play at first himself. He took that ground ball rather deep as he made the unassisted out. And on the play, Coleman moved to third and freeze in the second. So there are runners on second and third with two away. And the batter is the pitcher, Bob Pricky. This past season, Pricky batted 100. His record show won the home run this past year and four runs batted in. He bats right as he pitches. And he comes up now with two runners in scoring position. Coleman on third and Freeze on second as they both moved up on the Edwards ground out to Scowan. So here's Perky up there right now as Stafford starts the wind up. And the pitch is strike one called. A breaking pitch on the inside corner to Bob Perky. And Howard goes out a few feet in front of a plate, smooths down a little clump of dirt that was sticking up, and now returns and crouches behind the plate. Stafford, who has just gone to the rosin bag, decides to rub up that ball just a bit. Now the right-hander peers forward to get the sign. The count is strike one to Perky. Runners on third and second. All set to go. The wind-up by Stafford. The pitch is low. On the count now is one and one. He says that he was mighty excited about getting in the series. Lives in the Pittsburgh area. Last year saw every game in Pittsburgh, and he says he ate his heart out because he had been with the Pirates himself. Made up his mind that he was going to get in the series, and he certainly is. Here's the pitch coming up. And it's a curve for a called strike. As Perky started a move for it, held up. And the Stafford elbowed one over the outside corner for a called strike two. And the Cotton House ball one strike two. The Stafford throws a wicked curve ball. Infield back, they're two away. Coleman is on third. Free is on second. They're two down. On the count now, is ball one, strike two to Bob Perky. No score, bottom of the second. Stafford starts the windup. Here comes the pitch. Strike three is called, and Perky is out of breaking pitch on the inside corner this time, and the side retired. In the bottom of the second, the total show. No runs, there was one hit. No errors, and then left on third and second. And at the end of two full innings, the score. The Yankees nothing, and Cincinnati nothing.
Well, so far in the series, Richardson has been red hot for New York. He has four hits. The arrow of Bobby holds the record for most runs started in during the series. Twelve big ones against the Pirates last year. You'll find that and plenty more in the great Gillette World Series Encyclopedia, which comes free when you buy the Gillette Adjustable Razor at the regular price of $1.95. Here's a book that's brimming over with fascinating facts and highlights, with humorous drawings by a famous sports cartoonist, Willard Mullen, and page after page of interesting World Series records. It's the pocket-sized Gillette edition of the $5 Encyclopedia. You can't buy it anywhere, but it's yours free with a $1.95 Gillette Adjustable Razor. The adjustable is the razor you set to suit your own combination of skin and beard. With it, you get a dispenser of those remarkable super blue blades for all but unbelievable shaving comfort. Get your free Gillette World Series Encyclopedia with the razor set only a dollar ninety-five. We now pause thirty seconds for station identification. Are you mixing with the best? Saratoga fishy with the yellow label, it outsells all the rest. The genuine fishy with the yellow label tastes better tonight. Feel better tomorrow. Saratoga with the yellow label. Saratoga Vichy brings you all the sparkle flavor of a true champion. Make sure you're mixing with the best. Saratoga Vichy. This is WGY, WGFM, Schenectady. It's a ball game so far, and it's Cleet Boyer, who is one for five, leading off against Bob Perky. Perky all set to work, right-hander. Boyer, right-hander at the plate. Pitch, swung on, and there's a pop-up. Going into foul territory is Coleman, the first baseman, waiting, and has it just a few feet from the coach's box. So Boyer is out on the foul out. To Gordy Coleman, there's one away, and that brings up Bill Stafford, who this past season had a 179 batting average. He had no home runs, had three runs batted in. He steps up now with one away in the top of the third. No score. So far, there are two hits in the ball game, and Cincinnati has them both. Singles by Casco and Coleman. Now Stafford steps in with one out. And the uh, outfield shifts just slightly for Stafford. They come in shallow in center. And Robinson is playing a shallow right. He's moved closer to the right field line. Post is over in left center field. Here's the windup by Perky. The pitch coming up to Stafford. It's over for call strike one on a breaking pitch. Strike one to Bill Stafford. Perky all set. Gets the sign now from Edwards. Freeze. The third baseman has moved in just a bit also. Although playing behind the bag at third. The pitch. Swung on. It's a one-hopper back to Perky. And the for the first base. That may have been a liner. I believe it was a liner back to Perky for the out. So Stafford is out on the line out to Bob Perky. He cocked his arm there for a moment to throw toward Coleman and did throw to the Went toward the first baseman. I thought for a moment that ball may have skipped, but it did not. It was right on the line to Perky and Stafford is out. So they're two away in the top of the third as Richardson steps up. Two outs, Richardson the batter. He grounded out on the first inning. Here's the windup by Perky. The pitch to Bobby is a call strike in the inside corner. Two outs, top of the third, and Perky so far has let one New York Yankee get to base. That was Yogi Da on a walk. Boyer out of a pop-up foul. Stop it in the lineout. Right back to Perky. Richards in the batter. And the pitch is wide of the plate. The count now is one and one to Bobby Richardson. The outfield for Richardson is playing just slightly toward left. Richardson, so far in the series, has four for nine. This year, as last year, in one series game, he had three base hits. Bobby wears number one on the back of his uniform. Stocky right into batter. A one-on-one -one pitch comes in low. The count now is two balls and a strike. Two outs, top of the third, and there's no score on this glorious afternoon here in Cincinnati. Fans looking for a breakthrough here, and so far they have not seen any, although the Reds did have runners on third and second in the bottom of the second when Perky was out for out number three. Richardson waiting now with a count of two balls, strike one. Perky looks in to get the sign from Edwards. 
Here's the windup by the right-hander, and the pitch is swung on a ground ball. Back to Fergie. He's got a first base for the out. So Fergie puts the Yankees down in order in this third. With the Yankees not getting the ball out of the infield. And the score at the end of two and a half innings. The Yankees nothing, and the Reds nothing. You know, speaking of Richardson, he and Don Blasingame, who was the starting second baseman on the series for Cincinnati, are almost the same in height and weight. Another thing that both boys have in common is that they're red-hot fans of the Gillette Super Blue Blade. The way Bobby puts it is like this. The Super Blue Blade is a real beaut. I never dreamed that shaving could be so easy. Man after man, letter upon letter, say just about the same thing. The fact is, when you try the Gillette Super Blue Blade, you get shaving experience that's almost unbelievable. Shave so cool and refreshing, so quick and easy, so downright comfortable, why I could shoot the moon about them. And they're double-edged for economy, too. Slip a Super Blue Blade into a Gillette adjustable razor and see what I'm talking about. The adjustable lets you choose exactly the edge angle and exposure that you want from nine different settings. Right now, when you buy the adjustable, you get a dispenser of Super Blue Blades plus your free pocketbook World Series encyclopedia, all for just $1.95. Or get Super Blue Blades and dispenser of 10 for 69 cents, 15 for a dollar. This, up to this point, has been strictly a defensive, a pitching battle. And with two hits so far in this game, the Reds can post it for both. Casco and Coleman both have singles. And now as we move into the bottom half of the third, Helio Chacon, who looked at a called strike three from Stafford back in the first inning, is jumping up for the second time. The first ball was thrown out this afternoon here at Crosley Field by Dummy Hoy, who is the oldest living former major leaguer, 99 years old. Now here is Chacon stepping in. And so far, it's a scoreless ball game. Bottom of the third, Chacon, a right-handed batter. He followed by Casco and Pinson here in the bottom of the third. Bill Stafford set to work. Here's the pitch. And there's a fly ball, which is curving. And curving foul. Deep outside the left field line and into the screen. A long foul by Elio Chacon. So it's a long strike one, which has aroused the crowd. The last game in New York, Chacon hit a couple of long shots to deep left field in Yankee Stadium. Folks got to speculate whether or not they would have been homers here. The pitch to Chacon. He bunts along the first baseline. It's picked up by Staff. It's going to first. It's wide. It's by Scallon. Chacon is on the way to second. He'll go with the second stack. ball, which was outside the right field line, as Jacone is in at second base. Helio Jacone is on second, and he gets credit for a base hit and an error by Stafford. So he's in scoring position. On the batter is Eddie Casco, who is one for one. Here's the pitch, and it's a call strike. Elio Chacon with a punt along the first baseline. Both Stafford and Howard went for it. Stafford picked it up through wild past Scallon. Chacon getting credit for a bump single. Moved to second on Stafford's throwing error. The pitch to Casco. Swung on as a foul. Outside of first, Scallon is moving under it near the seat side. He has it just a couple of feet from the uh, box seats. Chacon staying at second as Scallon quickly runs that ball back to the infield. So Casco out number one in the foul out. And that brings up Veda Pinson, who's run up once and brought out to center. He'll be fouled by Frank Robinson. The Reds threatening here to break into the scoring column. In the bottom of the third inning, Pinson's run up once, he flies out to Mickey Mantle. There's a look back toward second to Chico on the pitch, and it comes in high for ball one to Pinson. Ball one to Veda Pinson, a left-handed batter. 
We've already seen the Chacon's speed. He scored him at fast ball in New York, a thrilling play in the World Series. The pitch, there's a ground ball going out to Richardson, moves to his right to take it, gets it over to first base, pull the out, as Chacon moves to third. So Pinson, out number two. Chacon is now on third. On the batter is Frank Robinson, who's been up once and has struck out. We're in the bottom of inning number three. The Reds have a runner on third with two away. No score is yet in the ball game. There have been three hits so far, and Cincinnati has the ball. One error, the Yankees have committed that. As Robinson steps in, Chacon takes a big lead. The pitch, swung on, it's a fly ball going to left. It's curving, and it curves foul. steps off to get some dirt. That brought the crowd to a roar. The count now is strike one to Robinson. Chacon on third takes a big lead off that bag. He's ready to dash and the ball gets away from Elston Howard. And I'm sure that Howard is well aware now of Chacon's great speed and daring. Reggie Otero, the third base coach, Dick Sisler at first for Cincinnati. As Robinson steps back in, strike one is the count. Chacon on third, two away. Chacon takes his lead. Stafford winds. The pitch to Robinson. Swung on. There's a line clock to left field. It is in there for base hit. Up against the face of the wall. Chacon scores. Robinson moves into second. and twisted a liner to left field which skipped up against the face of that wall and left. Darren moved to his right couldn't get to it. Ball was about oh, 15 feet perhaps more inside that left field line as the Reds lead by a score of one to nothing. Robinson has his first hit in the series and his first RBI. He's on second. Here's Gordy Coleman at the plate. The pitch swung on and missed. Was Coleman was shooting for the fences that time. Daly starts warming up for the New York Yankees. Robinson on second. Strike one to Coleman. And Coleman moves back from an inside pitch. The count is one and one. Daly is warming up as a left-hander for New York. Coleman the batter is an infield hit to his credit. Robinson on second base. There are two away. The pitch. Coleman swings a ground foul outside of first base, grabbed by the first base coach, Sisler, who returns the ball to Stafford. Chacon, in the setting, came up with a uh, bunt single, moved to second base on Stafford's wild throw on the play. After Casco fouled out, Chacon moved to third on Vincent's ground out, and he scored on Robinson's line shot to left, put the two bases. Pitch coming up now to Coleman. Down is one and two. The pitch swung on. It's a ground ball going at to Scourin. First base went up with it. Flips to Stafford covering. Pull the out in the close play. So the side retired in the bottom half inning number three. As the Reds come up for the first run of the afternoon. There were two hits. One error. And Robinson was left on second. The score at the end of three innings. Cincinnati won. The Yankees nothing. Move into the fourth inning now. It will be Kubek, Maris, and Mantle coming up. And listen to the applause out there in the sun deck seats as Robinson goes walking out to his post in right field. They're giving him a full round of applause, and Robinson drops his cap, putting his hand up there to the peak of the cap as he goes out to his position. You know, one of the speculations on this series prior to this afternoon was when Robertson and Maris would start to break loose. Neither had had a hit until Robinson has just come in with his two-bagger to drive in the run. And that is his first hit and his first RBI. Maris has gone 0 for 8 
and the question is how long can his power be contained? He'll be coming up in his fourth inning following Tony Kubek. Kubek, Marison Mantle. It was interesting to me yesterday to see that Tony Kubek, who was a very versatile member of the Yankee cast, was among those who went out into left field. Take a look at that Sunfield and see how he could do out there. I asked Ralph Houck if there were any thoughts of playing Kubek out there, and Ralph said, not really. I think that Tony just wanted to see for himself how tough was. So here now is Kubek, a left-handed batter, stepping in. Berkey. All set to work on the pitch to Kubek. Is swung on, there's a line drive to left. Post comes in, and he has it. Kubek out of the lineup to Wally Post. Post came in and quickly sort of flipped that glove of his up in front of his eyes to shield it just a bit. And then he continued his pursuit him to make the line out catch. The outfielders would prefer in left field to have liners. Well, then the uh, high flies up on the sun's rays. Here's Roger Maris. He's been up once in this game, and he has popped up. Left-handed batter facing Perky. The pitch is low, ball one, the score of the ball game. Cincinnati won. The New York Yankees nothing. We're in the fourth inning with one away. Maris followed by Mantle. The Eminem boys. The mayhem. Murder. These fellows have really blistered pitching this past year, as all of you know so very well. Maris, up there right now, the pitch, swung on, it's a ground ball going out to Coleman, going over to cover his perky for the out. Two away as Maris grounds out. Maris is trying to get the ball out of the infield, and great Reds pitching so far has throttled ambition for Maris, whose ambitions I'm sure are far loftier. He's not only trying to get out of the infield, but into the seats. Here's Mantle who's been up once. And has flied out. The center field. Two away, top of the fourth. The Reds lead by a 1-0 score. As Mantle steps in, the base Bob Perky. Veteran knuckleballer starts the wind up. And the pitch coming up to Mantle is inside for one. Ball one to Mantle with two down on the top of the fourth inning. The outfield just slightly shifted toward right. Robinson is more over toward right center. They're not playing uh, Mickey toward that right field line. But Robinson is deep in right. The pitch swung on. There's a fly ball going out to center field. Vincent goes back. He's waiting now. And he is there for the out. Just on the edge of the incline, going up in center field, or I'd say about 15 feet, or perhaps less, from the center field fence to retire the side. So, at the top of the fourth, three up and three down. And the score, after three and a half innings, Cincinnati won, and the New York Yankees, nothing. During the last World Series, Gillette introduced its new power spray deodorant for men, Right Guard, and how it's gone over. Today, it's the fastest growing men's deodorant of them all. Little wonder it's a big improvement over the others. You see, Right Guard is a push button power spray. Just touch the button, and out comes a fine mist that gives you 24 hour protection in just two seconds. It's not a messy cream you have to rub in, not a gummy roll on that wastes time and feels sticky, not a drip hit in the squeeze bottle spray. Right Guard is fast and easy. Its power spray gets right through for complete coverage. Dries on contact. Stops odor. Try cool, refreshing Right Guard power spray deodorant. Regular size costs just 89 cents. New money-saving king size gives you one-third more. Costs only a dollar. Broadcasting a perch as high above Crosley Field. We're actually up on the roof. The uh, press box is just to our right. Looking down below on a very beautiful uh, playing field and a very filled ballpark. Wally Post leads off the bottom half of the fourth. And the first pitch comes in high. Ball one from Bill Stafford. Daly is no longer warming up for New York. Post slide out last time up. 
post the batter. Ball on the count. Here's Stafford's next offering. And a swing and a miss. Count now is one and one. So far in this game, there have been four hits altogether. And the Reds have them all. Cincinnati with one run, four hits, and no errors. And in the Yankee totals, just one notation. They have one error, otherwise blanks. There's a foul back off Howard's left foot. Count Miles, ball one, strike two to Wally Post, be followed by Freeze and Edwards in the bottom of inning number four. The hit so far in this game, Casco, Coleman, Chacon, and Robinson. Robinson providing the extra base flow, and the run battled in as Chacon scored in the bottom half of the third. Reds lead by a one nothing score. The pitch to post on the way. Inside, moving Wally back from the plate. And the count miles, two and two. On the Reds' press buttons that all the press are wearing, this little line is written across. The Reds are for real. Here's the two and two pitch to post. And it is inside and high. The count miles, three and two to Wally Post. Gene Freeze on deck. This crowd really unleashed a roar as Robinson drove across the first run of this afternoon back in the third inning with his double to left, scoring to Cohen. Count Miles, three and two to Wally Post. Stafford set to work. Getting a sign now from Elston Howard. The right-hander starts to wind up. Here's the three and two pitch on the way. Fouled back, and the count holds at three and two. You know, speaking about tape measure home runs, Post is one of those who always gets in the discussion. They point out here at Crosley Field, as they do elsewhere, and say that's where Post hit one. He's got long ball power. Count now three and two to Post. Stafford set to work with a new ball. Right hand to Wines. Here's the three and two pitch. A little dribbler off the end of his bat going out to Richardson. They throw to first base for the out. That was it at the end of the bat, sort of snaked its way out to the Yankees' second baseman as Post is out number one in the bottom half of the fourth inning. And the batter now is Gene Freeze. Freeze drew a walk in the second. Stepping in now with one out and nobody on in the bottom half of the fourth. Score is Cincinnati one and the New York Yankees nothing. Freeze this past season at 26 home runs. Most of them pulled far to left. The pitch swung on as a fly ball going out to left. There it comes in, shielding his eyes. He's under it now and has it. Free is flying out to Barra in short left for out number two. And that brings up Johnny Edwards, who's been up once and grounded out. Only the third season of Cobalt Edwards. It was had a meteoric rise. Went to Ohio State University. Left-handed batter steps in with two outs and nobody on. A pitch from Stafford. Swung on as a ground ball inside the first baseline. Taken by Scourin. He goes over himself to make the tag at the base for the out to retire the side. So in the bottom half of the fourth inning, there are three up and three down. The score at the end of four innings. Cincinnati one. Yankees nothing. He can't get it. It's in to the right field. Pass the home run for Dusty Rose. That happened in the 54 series when Dusty stroke two pinch hit homers. Let's hear an actual broadcast of the belt of the soda game number one. Oh, and that is what cut out for him with one out two on here in the last of the tenth inning. Rose swings on the first pitch. It's a high fly ball into right field. Coming over is Pope. Back near the line. Leap. He can't get it. It's into the right field. Stands the home run for Dusty Rose. Levin throws his stuff straight up in the air. And that's it. You'll find this thrilling story in the Gillette World Series Encyclopedia. Yours free with the purchase of the Gillette Adjustable Razor Set for only $1.95. This 256-page pocketbook contains loads of interesting World Series stories, humorous cartoons by Willard Mullen, and practically every series fact and record. And it's yours free with the Gillette Adjustable Razor and the dispenser of those amazingly easy shaving Super Blue Blades. All for the price of the razor set alone. Just $1.95. Fourth 
with Wade Hoyt here in Cincinnati with the score, the Reds won. Yankees nothing. And here's the fifth inning coming up. Yogi Berra, who is two for six in World Series play, walked in the second inning. And the stocky Yankee outfielder, catcher, steps in right now. Yogi Berra's homer up Joey J last Thursday was his 12th in series competition. Only if Babe Ruth's 15 and Mickey Mantle's 14 top. Yogi Berra steps in now, leading off the fifth to face Bob Perky. Berra, the only Yankee base runner so far, with a walk in the second. Ilio Chacon is playing him a couple of feet back in the right field grass. The pitch is over for a call strike one to Yogi Berra. Perky throws a lot of breaking pitches as a good sinker and of course a fine knuckle ball. Tomorrow starting pitchers Whitey Ford and Jim O'Toole. Strike one, the count to Barra, leading off the fifth. Here's Perky's next one. And it's swung on and fouled off to the left in the count. Ah, strike two. That was the knuckler. Up to get good wood on it. As Perky throws it right off his fingertips, as he says, with fingertip control. Some of the other knuckleball pitches use different styles. Wilhelm has his nails longer. He says that prevents some irritation on the tops of his fingers, but Perky says is a pretty well calloused. He doesn't uh, have that problem. Strike two to Bella. Here's the pitch. And there is a swing and a miss. The ball dropped by Edwards. Picks it up. Touches Bella. The strikeout. That was a knuckler that was missed. Went darting in as Bella goes down. On the uh, strikeout. Now that's strikeout number one, posted by Perky this afternoon. And it brings up Austin Howard, who has been up once and has popped up. Some knuckleball pitchers use sometimes just one uh, finger to push off. Some use two. Perky uses both fingers there in his method. Here's the pitch to Howard. And it's over in the outside corner for a call strike. Perky's knuckler is a little faster than some of the other well-known uh, knuckleball fellas. Dances and darts just like anybody else's, and it's mighty tough to handle. Edwards is strictly on his toes. Strike one to Elston Howard. One out, top of the fifth, score one nothing Cincinnati. The pitch on the way is low, and the count now is one and one to Howard. He followed by Bill Scowron. Perky steps off the mound, goes to the rosin bag. Tugs in his cap, now runs and along the side of his pants. He's given that ball a good rubbing before looking him out to get the sign. Count is one and one to Howard. Score one nothing. Cincinnati leads. Now Perky set to work. Here's the side from Edwards. The wind up by Perky. The pitch on the way. Swung on as a foul going off to the right, heading toward the seats and going out of play. Ball one, strike two. Perky rubbing up a new ball. Wally Moses coaching at first base for New York. Frankie Crosetti over third. Now we're all set. The count, ball one, strike two. Elston Howard, the batter. Here's the windup. And the one and two pitch. Swung on. There's a fly ball going to center field. Pinson turns. He's going back. He's near the fence. It is up against the fence over his head. On the way to second base is Howard. There's a throw. It's going to be close. He is safe. Pasco taking the throw. And Howard went sliding in, just barely beating it. With a double off the wall in center field over Pinson's head. So the Yankees have their first hit off Bob Perky. A double by Elston Howard to straightaway center field. Hit number one for New York coming with one away in the top of the fifth. And the batter now is Bill Scourd has been up once and has fly to right. Scourd looks into Yankee manager Ralph Houck who's on the dugout steps off to our right. And uh, before stepping in, Houck shouted something out to Scowron. Bill is up there now with Howard on second, one down. Score one nothing. Cincinnati is leading. There's a look back towards second base. Here's the pitch to Scowron. And there's a line drive to Casco. He'll go over to make the double play unassisted. As Howard cannot get back to the bag. Side and a quick inning ending double play. Howard had no chance to get back. Totals in the fifth. No runs. One hit. No errors. 
Reds, and nobody left. Score of the ball game after four and a half innings, Reds won, Yankees nothing. And now as Bob Perky comes up to the plate and draws a nice hand, also coming up, a former World Series star, now a World Series broadcaster, voice of the Cincinnati Reds, Wade Hoyt. Wade. Thank you, Bob, and we're going into the bottom of the fifth inning. And the score is Cincinnati 1 and the New York Yankees nothing. Bob Perky, the pitcher for the Reds, is the batter right here at this moment. They pitch now by Stafford. Perky took a strike. She leaned away, but the curveball broke in there. And that is no balls and a strike on Perky. Uh, a couple of years ago, Perky hit a grand slam home run. And Stafford let loose again. Perky took another one. There was a fastball. Strike two. No balls, two strikes. Stafford bends down, puts his hands on his knees as he takes the sign from Elston Howard. He comes up once. He pitches. That's in there for strike three as Perky looked at it and is called out on strikes for the second time for Stafford's fourth strikeout. The Reds are leading one to nothing, one out in the bottom half of the fifth inning. And Elio Chacon, who started the Reds' one-run rally with a bunt in the third inning, is up there once more. He took the third strike in the first inning, and he dropped a bunt single in the third inning, which the pitcher, and after fielding, threw past first base. He threw now to Chacon. Chacon took strike one call, and then uh, Chacon went the second, of course, on the. Error by the pitcher, and then he scored later on a double by Robinson. He hit the ball now on the ground to the third baseman, Boyer. Boyer grabbed it, made the play at first, and Chacon is out at first. Two away for the Reds in the fifth inning. The Reds are leading one to nothing. Eddie Casco coming up. Casco had a single in the first inning. He fouled out to the first baseman in the third inning. Casco has been playing a bang up defensive game for the Reds. And he's also been to the plate 11 times with three hits in this series. He pitched down to Eddie. Eddie hit a high fly ball back, well, right over near second. Then Richardson, the second baseman, moved over, caught the ball almost on the second base bag. And so in the bottom of the fifth inning, the Cincinnati Reds no on the base. In five turns, the Reds one run, four hits, four men left on. And so at the end of the fifth inning, the score is the Cincinnati Reds one, the New York Yankees nothing. What's the word on the new cars for Chrysler Corporation? What's the word you hear? The word is a number, 300, the brand new Chrysler 300, a new high-performance sports series in a popular price range. A full-size Chrysler, and that's about as non-compact as you can get. Yet the new 300 comes at a new low price that puts its sports car performance well within your reach. Take your choice of V8 engines from the standard 305 to the high-performance 380 horsepower. The new Chrysler 300, the excitement of high performance in a popular price range from Chrysler Corporation. See your Chrysler dealer during October Open House. The pause had 30 seconds for station identification. Are you mixing with the best? Saratoga Vichy with the yellow label. It outsells all the rest. The genuine Vichy with the yellow label. Tastes better tonight. Feel better tomorrow. Saratoga with the yellow label. Enjoying the game? Well, you'll enjoy it more with Saratoga Vichy. Make sure you're mixing with the best. Saratoga Vichy. WGY, WGFM, Schenectady. Third baseman up there now. As Perky fires to him, there's a ball hit in the air. A pop-up out there to Casco, who's shading his eyes halfway between second and third. He made the catch, and Boyer is out. There have been a tremendous number of first balls hit today, first pitches. There have been a tremendous number of them swung at and hit it in some way or another. So Boyer just popped up to the shortstop, and now Stafford is up there. The pitcher is coming to the plate. 
This is the top of the sixth inning here at Crosley Field in Cincinnati. The Reds have one run, four hits, no errors. The New York Yankees, no runs, one hit, and one error. The batter now staff as Perky dangles his arms, bending a, over, taking sides from Edwards. He winds, he pitches. There is strike one call. No balls, one strike. Johnny Edwards down there handling Perky's knuckleball pretty nicely. He's Cincinnati infield spread equidistant one from the other as the batter and pitcher staff have moved out of the batter's box. The left field of Post has moved over to left center. Henson is playing a shallow center. Robinson a very shallow right. Perky is winding again. He let fly with the pitch. There's a ball hit in the air back of first base. Chacon is going over after toward the foul line. Made the catch right on the foul line. In fair territory. Down back of first. There are two away for the Yankees in the sixth inning. The Reds are so far ahead in this game. One to nothing. The Reds leading one to nothing. With two out in the top of the sixth inning. This brings the top of the Yankee batting order up there now. In Bobby Richardson. He's been up twice, he's grounded out twice. Once the shortstop threw him out, and once Perky himself threw him out. Perky is scraping the mound in front of the rubber. Now he's taking his signals as Edwards down, holding a low target. Richardson, the batter, stands up in front of the plate a little bit. The pitch to Richardson, he laid a ball out of left field. Post scampered in, made the catch, and Richardson is out. The sun is very bad. The outfielders are having a bit of a problem. So in the... Top of the sixth inning, the New York Yankees no one to base. In six turns, the Yankees no runs, one hit, and one man left on. And so at the end of five and a half innings, the score is the Cincinnati Reds won, the New York Yankees nothing. If you're looking at new cars, look twice at Chrysler for 62. The big news is the all-new Chrysler 300, a high-performance sports series and a new popular price range. Built to step out with V8s ranging from a standard 305 to a high-performance 380 horsepower. And this new 300 series steps ahead with a choice of four different interiors, two with bucket seats and luxurious cloth, vinyl, or leather upholstery. And for 62, Chrysler brings you the Newport. The full-size Chrysler, again the price surprise of the year. See the high-performance Chrysler for 62. And they're simply beautiful. Looks like it's gonna be a Chrysler year. See your Chrysler dealer during October Open House. Well, here at Crosley Field, they take this World Series to heart. It's very intense and very seriously. There are five bands of different natures down in the grandstand. Roving troubadours, you might say, that are wandering, wandering minstrels through the grandstand, entertaining the people. And the fans have really been sort of starved for World Series excitement. Beta Pinson now leading off in the bottom of the sixth inning. Batting left-handed, he's waiting for Stafford, who has his glove under his arm. As he takes now, he's taking the signs from Howard. Pinson keeps pumping that bat, he crouches a bit. Now Stafford pitches, Pinson bunted a foul off to the right of the plate, caught by Howard. Now Pinson attempted to bunt, but he popped it in the air, and Howard, the catcher, trotted after it, made the catch off to the right. Pinson is out. So Robinson up now. Robinson drove in the... Long Cincinnati run with a double in the third inning. Robinson at the plate. You know, in a number of National League cities, I don't know so much about the American League, but Los Angeles for one, Pittsburgh for another, there's generally a bugler who plays the charge, and you may hear it occasionally down there in the stand, and it's and now uh, it's found its way to Cincinnati. As Stafford taking the sign, ready to pitch, he throws. Robinson toppled over a little backwards. It was not a knockdown pitch. The, I can't say that at all because it was supposed to have been a curve and it didn't break. One ball, no strikes, one or nothing. Now Stafford in action again. Now he pitches. Robinson took a low breaking ball. That's two balls and no strikes, two or nothing. Score is one to nothing. The Reds are leading with one out in the bottom of the sixth inning. They play Robinson deep and they shade him toward left field. Yogi Perra is at the base of what they call the terrace here, which is an incline which starts 25 feet from the left field wall. The pitch to Robinson. Robinson hit a high foul. That's over toward the Reds' bench. 
Elston Howard, the catcher, is coming over toward the box seats. Made the catch, and Robinson is out. Two away for the Reds in the sixth inning. Once again, the score, Cincinnati won. The New York Yankees, nothing. Two out in the bottom of the sixth. Marty Coleman up now. Coleman single in the second, and he grounded out in the third. Coleman so far in the series has three hits and ten turns at bat. Just batting an even 300 for that matter. The pitch to Coleman, he grounded. He rolled a foul over to the box seats alongside of first. No balls, one strike. Well, they give the batting average on the scoreboard is 250, but that's only up until today. He has had one out of two today. Coleman then made a line drive in the left field. That's another base hit. And Coleman has reached first on a single. Barra grabbed the ball. We turned it to second base in a hurry. This brings up Wally Pope. Pope is an Ohio boy. He comes from the region of St. Wendell and St. Henry up in Ohio. And he has many, many friends in this area. Yes, this is the third game of the very brilliant World Series, I would say, so far. Been excellently played by both teams. As a matter of fact, good pitching all the way through it by both sides. Post up there now. Stafford fires and Post took a low curveball outside. Ball one. Now, it's a little difficult to distinguish a curve from here at times, uh, to distinguish a curve from a knuckleball or some other type pitch. Sliders, if it's a good slider, you're not supposed to see. The batter's not even supposed to be able to distinguish that one. One ball, no strikes. As Stafford hesitates. Now he's ready to pitch. He does. Post grounded a foul. He hit the ball with one hand. The left hand slipped off the bat and he reached around with his hit it with one arm. That when he hit it down past Otero. A ground foul. One ball, one strike. The Reds are leading one to nothing. Two out in the bottom of the sixth inning. The Reds have one run, five hits. The Yankees no runs, one hit. Coleman is on first base. Two out in the inning. As Staffel is very carefully adjusting his foot against the pitcher's rubber. Bending over with his hands and his knees, taking his signal. Now he's ready. He's pitching. Post hit a ground ball down at Boyer at third. Who flipped it off to Richardson at second, forcing Coleman at second. The Reds are retired in the sixth inning. And in the sixth inning, Cincinnati no runs, one hit, and a man left. They have one run, five hits, five left for the six turns at bat. And so at the end of the sixth inning, the score is the Cincinnati Reds won, the New York Yankees nothing. Say, hey, how lucky do you feel right now? Well, you may be luckier than you think. Chrysler Corporation is offering 180 brand new cars free during October open house. And one of them may be yours. It's an open invitation to see the new cars and sign up to win one. If you own a car, any make or model, any year, you could be one of the lucky winners. To qualify, all you have to do is come in and register with any authorized dealer who sells Plymouth, Valiant, Dodge, Lancer, Chrysler, or Imperial. That's all there is to it, but remember, you have to register by October 31st. Visit your dealer during October open house. Why not tonight? You may win a brand new 62 car from Chrysler Corporation. Free car offer void in Nebraska, Wisconsin, Florida, Canada, and wherever else prohibited by law. All right, here we are back at Crosley Field in Cincinnati for the third game of the World Series. Wade Hoyt, who along with Bob Wolf. There's a very interesting thing. You know, they're building a super highway just beyond the center field wall here at Crosley Field. And, of course, there are tractors and cranes and different construction equipment. And they are serving at the moment as temporary <laughs> as temporary seats for a lot of folks who couldn't get in. And they are sitting on the cranes and on the tractors and on the hauling trucks over there, getting a peek over here at the World Series over the center field wall. Tony Kubek leading off now in the top of the seventh with Perky in action. He pitches to Kubek. That's low. Ball one. This is the top of the seventh inning, and the Reds are leading one to nothing. Kubek starts the meat of the batting order, we might say, up there, with Kubek, Maris, and Mantle. Do at the plate in this inning. Kubek, Kubek batting left-handed. 
Breeze at third base is playing him shallow. It's a left-handed batter. The pitch to him now. There's a ball hit in the center field for a base hit. As Kubek plays a base hit in the center, Pinson recovered the ball, got it back to Casco at second base. That is the second hit for the New York Yankees. Second hit of the ball. Puts Kubek on first base, no one out. In the top of the seventh inning, the fans are beginning to be a little anxious now here in Cincinnati as Roger Maris, the great home run hitter, comes up there. He'll be followed by Mickey Mantle. Maris batting left-handed. The second base combination of Casco and Chacon. Casco the shortstop, and Chacon got together out there on who would cover in case the ball was hit to the infield. Freeze is playing in front of third. Perky is taking signals from Johnny Edwards, the catcher. Perky is giving Quebec a look on first base as the Cincinnati right-hander pitches. The ball is hit in the air out there in center, and Vincent is making the run for it. Goes over into left center, made the catch, and Maris is out. Bringing up Mickey Mantle. Now we have a couple of right-handers warming up in the bullpen. Ken Hunt. Ken Hunt is warming up for the Reds, and also Jay Hook. All right. <laughs> the score is Cincinnati, one run, five hits, no errors. The New York Yankees, no runs, two hits, and one error. Mantle batting left-handed. So Perky is just checking his runner on first base. Now he pitches. Mantle missed for strike one. Mantle hit it, took a hard cut at the knuckleball. No balls in one strike. Mickey went for the works. be caught as Edwards slid after the ball and slid right into the Yankee bench, uh, into the Reds bench. He took a, a tremendous sprint and then slid after the ball and he slid right down the step. He didn't hurt himself. He's up on his feet and back in the catcher's box. Tomorrow's pitches will be the same pitches who open the series for the New York Yankees Whitey Ford for the best Jim O'Toole. As Perky hesitates now, he pitches to Mantle. Matt, they bounced off the glove of, of um, Edwards into the bench and... Uh, Kubek, who had taken second, has only allowed one base. It goes as a pass ball for Edwards. Now that you see before the ball game here, they were talking about, even Edwards said himself, he intended to use the oversize, the king-size catcher's glove to try to catch these knuckleballs. But I see that he uh, must have switched along the line somewhere because he's not using it. One ball, two strikes, one and two on Matt. Kubek on second via the pass ball route. One and two count on Mantle batting left hand, standing right in the center of the batter's box. As as Perky hesitates, he pitches again. Mantle struck out. Perky's second strikeout. The score is one to nothing. The Cincinnati Reds leading one to nothing with two out in the top of the seventh. Coleman is coming over from first base to have a little chat with pitcher Perky. You know, the, the, the excitement is so intense and varied here. You know, the Yankees have been in this thing so much that they remind me of sort of Park Avenue business tycoons and making another business deal, you know. And they approach it with a sort of a suavity and a, and a, and a metropolitan demeanor for the Reds. It's like a young man making his first big deal, you know. And uh, they're all... Really excited. The pitch now to Yogi Berra. That's low. Ball one. One ball, no strikes. One and nothing. One ball, no strikes. 
cards. This is the 12th series for Yogi Berra. This is World Series number 12 for him, so he's not exactly short of change. And neither is Corsetti, who has been in 20 of them, third base coach. Berra hit a, a little lobber out there, right field somewhere, and Robinson could not get it. The score is tied as Kubek has scored. There was almost a three-way collision between Chacon, Pinson, and Robinson. As a matter of fact, Robinson is down. It was a, a five-ball single in the right field, and when is the base hit? Chacon is down. Chacon was brushed by Robinson, knocked off his feet. Trainer Doc Rohde of the Cincinnati Reds is jogging out the right field to see if, if Chacon is all right. But the score is tied as Berra seemingly hit the ball on the handle of the bat. He got a, a hold of it sufficiently so to drive it as a fly ball in the short right. Chacon went back and even managed to get his glove on the ball. He couldn't have held the ball whatsoever, but he made a nice try. Robinson could not get it either, and it fell in there for a base hit. Kubek scored all the way from second. And the score is tied now at one to one. The Cincinnati Reds have one run and five hits. The Yankees one run and three hits. So the game is tied up. Vera himself is on first base. Well, Perky himself, because of that knuckleball, as I uh, would believe that Hoyt Wilhelm and other knuckleball pitchers throughout baseball have experienced the same thing, of course, that uh, they... Uh, throw a knuckleball to the plate and once in a while it bounces off the catcher's glove and a man on base takes another base on the, and then it results sooner or later in a run. That's happened to Perky quite a few times this season. Matter of fact, he, uh, Perky struck out Willie Mays and the ball got by the catcher, rolled all the way to the backstop and Mays took two bases on it. So it is, everybody's back at their positions now as everybody seems to be okay. Elston Howard, who doubled in the fifth inning, is up. He has one out of two for the afternoon so far. So Elston Howard batting right-handed. Perky is leaning forward, taking the signals from Johnny Edwards. Edwards has, or rather, Howard has the left side turned in. The pitch to Howard. That's a pitch outside. Ball one. One ball, no strikes. There are two men out in the top of the seventh inning here at Crosley Field, the third game of the World Series. Cincinnati Reds have one run and five hits. The Yankees have one run and three hits. So it's a tie ball game. As Perky checking his run up there on first base, now he pitches, and Howard took a strike. He started a swing, and he thought better of it. He took the pitch, and it's called a strike. One ball, one strike, and he protests mildly to umpire Frank Humont. I might say, from my observation, that the umpires have been doing a very excellent job here during this series. They, they've been really on the ball, and they've all looked good calling balls and strikes, and, and uh, really an excellent job. Umont, Donatelli, Rungi, Common, Crawford, and, and Bob Stewart. So Perky fires again. That's a little off the plate outside. Two balls and a strike. Two and one. All these Yankees are dangerous. Well, all batters are dangerous for that matter. You just simply cannot hold any batter cheaply in any league, in any team. Two balls and a strike. Two and one. So Perky is hesitating. Now he's pitching. Howard hit a foul. That's up on the roof over there to the right. So it's two balls and two strikes. Two and two. Two out. In the top of the seventh inning, the score is tied at one to one. Perky is preparing another ball out there now. He, Perky always takes his glove off and puts it under his left arm as he rubs the ball up. Then he has a little mannerism. After he pitches the ball, he always taps his glove with his fist after he throws the ball. Two balls, two strikes, two and two. As Perky is ready to go again, and now he pitches. Howard, Howard uh, fouled it against the backstop. Two balls, two strikes, two and two. Funny what strange mannerisms you can get in, what su strange superstitions you can become, uh, or become part of you. For instance, when I was pitching, I could never step on the foul line coming in or going from the pitcher's mound and going back to it. I always put my glove a certain way, face down or the palm downward. See, two balls, two strikes. 
Burton take the sign again from Edwards. And Bob's bracing himself, ready to pitch. He does. That's a high fly ball. That's moving down there by the third base line in the foul territory. Freeze has it outside the line. You, you never know here whether they're going to blow back foul. And you must pause a moment. So in the seventh inning, the New York Yankees came back with one run, two hits, and a man left on. The Yankees have one run, three hits, and two men left on base. And so, at the end of six and a half innings, the score is New York 1, the Cincinnati Reds 1. High performance in a popular price range. The new Chrysler 300, a full-size Chrysler, not a junior edition. There's nothing humdrum about this one. It's all live car. The big V8 engines range from the standard 305 to the high-performance 380 horsepower. Acceleration is up for safety and passing, yet gas consumption is down. High performance in a car that looks like high performance. It's clean and crisp with a simplicity that makes sense. See the Chrysler 300, a high-performance sports series in a popular price range. One of the live new cars from Chrysler Corporation. And it's simply beautiful. Looks like it's gonna be a Chrysler. See your Chrysler dealer during October open house. Lead off the bottom of the seventh inning, and the score is one to one. The Yankees. With one run, three hits, the Cincinnati Reds. One run, five hits, the Yankees have made one error, the Reds have made none. Gene Freeze will lead off. All right, we'll pause here 30 seconds for station identification. Are you mixing with the best? Santa Cruz, a fishy with a yellow label. It outsells all the rest. The genuine fishy with a yellow label. Tastes better tonight. Feel better tomorrow. Santa Cruz, with the yellow label. It's a hit in any man's league. That's Saratoga Vichy. Look for the yellow label that marks the champion, Saratoga Vichy. This is WGY, WGFM, Schenectady. Well, the Reds have pitched beautiful baseball. So it's a real pitching big league duel. The pitch now to Freeze. Freeze hit a fly ball in left field. Yogi Berra is moving over under it, going to his left. He has it, then there's one away for the Reds in the seventh. This will bring up... Johnny Edwards has been up twice with no hits. The score is one to one. One out in the bottom of the seventh inning here at Crosley Field. Before the game, why, there was a moment of silence and respect for Mr. Powell Crosley, Jr., the former owner of the Cincinnati Reds, who died last March. Arroyo and Buck Daly. Louis Arroyo and Buck Daly warming up in the Yankee bullpen. The pitch now to Edwards. Edwards throws the ball in right field, and that's the base hit. Edwards is going to try for two. The throw is coming in, and he's slid in there safely with a two-base hit. Harris made a nice throw. His throw was nice. Back to second base, but Edwards beat it. Edwards' third hit of the series. Seven turns at bat, and he has driven in two of the Cincinnati runs in this series. Edwards is on second. Berkey is the batter now. Bottom of the seventh. One man out here at Crosley Field. The score is tied. One to one. Bill Stafford hesitates. Pitches to Perky, who took it low outside. Ball one. Now, of course, the, it would be rather difficult for Edwards to score if a single is made as the outfield is playing very shallow. The Yankee outfielders, Berra, Mantle, and Maris, are playing very shallow. Another pitch to Perk. That's in there. Strike one. One ball, one strike. One of each. So Stafford, the right-hander, Bending over, hands on his knees again, taking the signals. Now he fires. Berkey took the curveball a little off the plate, according to you, Montana. Ball two and strike one. Doing one on Berkey. Stop. 
Stafford delivers again. Perky ground a foul against the box seats alongside of third. Two balls and two strikes. Stafford, the right hand of pitching for the Yankees, is six feet one inch tall. Perky pitching for the Reds is six two. He's the batter. Don flashing game is throwing down on the bullpen, which leads us to, sus- to suspect that perhaps uh, he may put in a pinch hitter for Chacon, or that either Chacon may have been injured a bit when he pumped into Robinson and Wright. Uh, the pitch now to Perky, he took a cut and he missed for strike three. Now let's see, Chacon is the next batter. He's out on the batting circle. And Jerry Lynch, the, who made a name for himself in the National League, this year, as a pinch hitter, is going to the plate, going to bat for, going to bat for Chacon. Jerry Lynch, his batting average during the season, 316. One time so far in this series, been up once with no hits. They're walking Lynch perfectly, ball one. They're putting him on. Ball two. Ball three. Stafford pitching outside, ball four, and Lynch has an intentional pass. The score here at Crossley Field is one to one. Two out in the bottom of the seventh inning. The batter is Eddie Castro. The Reds have one run and six hits. The New York Yankees one run and three hits. Now flashing game will run for Lynch. Flashing game is running for Lynch. Casco with one hit in three turns. Bottom of the seventh, two out. Stafford is hesitating. The pitch to Casco over the plate. Strike one call. Stafford is hesitating again, checking his runners, hands on his knees, now he's ready, here it comes, and the base hit in the left, and this may be, this may be Trevor Ferry is throwing into the home plate, the Reds are leading 2-1. to one. Castro, single to the left, scoring, Edwards. The Reds now have two runs, seven hits, no errors, the New York Yankees, one run, three hits, and one error. The Yankee manager walking to the mound. Also, Elston Howard, who is going out there to receive instructions from Hawk. There have been two left-handers warming up in the Yankee bullpen. Louis Arroyo, who has been their talented relief pitcher this year. And Bud Daly, who once was a, such a star for Kansas City. And who has a tremendous curve ball. And Daly is being brought in, I believe. Daly will be the relieving pitcher in this situation. That was the second hit for Casco in today's ball game. Edwards scored from second, and Blasting Game stopped at second. Casco's on first, and now Daly is the batter. They brought him in the pitch to, especially to Pinson, the left-handed batter coming up next. So this is Bud Daly. Now it's I would say that Bill Stafford pitched fine ball. He certainly has nothing well. Naturally, any pitcher will feel a little bad if he leaves the game behind when his team is losing. But nevertheless, he shouldn't feel a uh, chain of anything. He pitched real nice baseball for the New York Yankees. So Daly is pitching in the seventh inning with two men out. 
This is Daly's first appearance in this series.
Freeze at third, Casco at short, Blasting Game at second, Coleman at first, Post and left, Pinson and center, Robinson to right, Perky pitching, Edwards catching. And this is Wade Boyd, who along with Bob Wolf is with you today. As Perky in action again, he pitches, and there's a foul ball, but that's twisting around into the box seats alongside a third. One ball, one strike. That landed in the aisle down there. Beyond third. One ball, one strike. So the Reds have their two relief aces down in the bullpen now. Bill Henry, the left-hander, and Jim Brosnan, the right-hander. And Louis Arroyo continues to warm up for the Yankees down in their bullpen in right field. The pitcher is due at the plate third in this inning for the Yankees. So Perky winding again, pitching. As a ball hit back to Perky, the grab is through to first. One out in the eighth inning. The score is the Cincinnati Reds two, the New York Yankees one. The Reds have two runs, seven hits, no errors. The Yankees have one run, three hits, and one error. So Cleet Boyer is the batter, the third baseman, fellow who made such brilliant plays in New York City. Batting right-handed. As Perky is whining, now he pitches. That's taken for a strike. No balls, one strike. Breeze is playing a little close to the line now, down a third, trying to block off anything that might look like an extra base hit along the line, down alongside a third base. The Reds are shading Boyer a little left field. Now the pitch to him, he took high. That's one ball, one strike. Now, that evidently was one of those butterfly knucklers as uh, Boyer snapped his head around, much as a fighter might if you were taking a a quick jab at his head as he pulled his head to the side a little bit. One ball, one strike. One and one on Boyer. One out in the eighth inning as Perky ready pitches. It hit the bat of Boyer and flew over into the grandstand alongside of first base. One ball, two strikes. Score is Cincinnati 2, the New York Yankees 1, with one out in the 8th inning. Beautiful day here, not a cloud in the sky, not a vestige of a cloud. Warm, delightful. Edwards holding the target for his pitcher now as Perky starts his windup. He throws, there's a fly ball hit alongside of first, and Coleman indicates he'll try it. He made the catch, and uh, go away in the 8th inning for the Yankees. That was a foul ball. The Cincinnati Reds are leading the Yankees 2-1. Two, two out in the eighth. The Reds with two runs and seven hits. The Yankees with one run and three hits. And Johnny Blanchard is the batter. Johnny Blanchard. Blanchard in the... This season batted 305. He has no average in the series so far. Played right field in the second game. Batting left-handed. As the ball hit in the air on right field, Robinson is moving up toward the fence, and it goes in for a home run, a pinch hit home run for Johnny Blanchard, who is making the tour around the bases, just turning at second. Now... There's another homer for the Yankees. And that puts the score at 2-2. Two to two. The Yankees with two runs, four hits. And the Reds with two runs and seven hits. And all the Yankees on the Yankee bench over there to the right greeted Blanchett, of course, when he came to the plate. That's Blanchett's first World Series home run, by the way. His first hit of the series. And it tied the score. This brings up the top of the batting order in Richardson. Richardson has been three times to plate, no hits. Now the pitch there to Richardson, that's strike one call. Blanchard, of course, was batting for the pitcher, Bud Daly. Yes, he parked one up there, hit the ball well, a very high one that fell over the right field fence into the bleachers. 
Robinson backed up as far as he could, took a leap at the ball, but there was no possibility. One strike on Richards. The score is 2-2. Two to two. An excellent ball game here as Perky throws again. There's a ball batted for a single and a left in between short and third. And that becomes the fifth hit for the New York Yankees. The Yankees have two runs and five hits. The Reds have two runs and seven hits. So Richardson is on first, and Tony Kubek, the left-handed hitting shortstop, is the bat. The home run by Blanchett was the fourth in this series by the Yankees. Richardson on first. Parkey hesitates. There goes Richardson. He throws to second, and the man is the ball in the center field. But it's picked up quickly by Pinson. A stolen base by Richardson. Richardson has stolen second. You see, there is no doubt but what uh, a fellow like uh, Ralph Hauk, the manager of the Yankees, would uh, try to get that run that could put the Yankees ahead to second base, and doubly so because of the fact that Perky throws so many knuckleballs, which are very difficult for the catcher to handle. And uh, there is some doubt and element as to whether... Uh, now, there's a, there's a little hassle at the home plate. They're not not uh, uh, bitter, but at any rate, there's, they are questioning the umpire as they... I guess they're trying... I don't know what they're trying to say. It may be that Quebec... Uh, Yeah, they're questioning whether it's a ball or a strike now, I guess. That was the, as they as think that perhaps Kubek tried to punt the ball. He started a punt and evidently retracted his bat, and the umpire decided it was a ball. And there was a slight protest now on the part of Perky. They claimed that he punted the ball. But Richardson stole second. And Richardson himself is on second. There are two away in the top of the eighth inning. The score is two to two. And Quebec is the batter. He's had one hit. He had a, a single in the seventh, and he eventually scored on a single by Perra. Quebec batting left hand. So Perky pitches now. That's too low inside, and Edwards walked after the ball on his knees. He actually walked on his knees to catch the ball off to the right of the plate. Low inside on Quebec. Two balls and no strikes. Maris is on deck. Score two to two. Two to two ball game here now. Two out in the eighth at Crosley Field. Third game of the World Series. So Perky pauses. Now he pitches. There's a ball hit in the air out in right center. And there comes Pinson. There comes Robinson. And Pinson caught the ball. Pinson went down with it to get under the sun. So as he could get his vision straightened out there. He made the catch. But in the eighth inning, the Yankees tied the score with one run, two hits, and had a man left on. The Yankees had two runs, five hits, three men left on base. And so at the end of seven and a half innings, the New York Yankees 2, the Cincinnati Reds 2. Newport, again the price surprise, and again no junior edition. A full-size Chrysler in every way. There's full-size luxury with richly finished interiors and exteriors. Full-size comfort with a 122-inch wheelbase, stretch-out room for six. And full-size power with a Husky 361 cubic inch engine that does its best on regular gas. And with Newport, you'll get better acceleration and use less gas. The price surprise? Newport, one of the live new cars from Chrysler Corporation, suggested retail price only $2,964 plus destination charges. And this simply beautiful Looks like it's gonna be a Chrysler deal. See your Chrysler dealer during October Open House. Well, Louis Arroyo, A-double-R-O-Y-O is the pitcher for the Yankees. In the bottom half of the eighth inning with the score tied 2-2. Two to two. And, of course, you know that Arroyo was once a Cincinnati Red for a very brief period. He was also, of course, a Pittsburgh Pirate and at another time a St. Louis Cod. Robinson will be the first batter to face him. Robinson drove in one of the two Reds with a double. 
one of the two runs. He had a double in the third. This season, pitching for the Yankees, Arroyo, of course, was a very fine pitcher, winning 15 and losing five. Third and pitching average in the league. He pitched now to Robinson. Robinson struck hard and he missed. Strike one. And the Yankees have uh, Demestri, an infield of... Uh, wait a minute, just a moment here. Renup, I believe it is. Renup, he has... They have Renup forming up and also Shelf. All right, Arroyo working again now. Pitches. Robinson grounded a foul. Now it's Coates down in the bullpen. Jim Coates. No ball, two strike count on Robinson. Score is two to two. Bottom of the eighth in the most exciting game here at Crosley Field. The Yankees are playing Robinson dead left field. Shifted right field behind first base, pretty wide open. As Arroyo, the left-hander, is taking his signals, winding, pitching. Robinson took the high fastball. One ball, two strikes. One and two. One and two, Arroyo is in action again. He pitches. That's outside with the screwball. Two balls and two strikes. A left-handed screwball breaks down and away from a right-handed batter. Two and two. The score is two to two. The Yankees two, the Reds two. No one out in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Vera has moved up at the base of the terrace in left field. Mickey Mantle, the center fielder, is in left center at the base of the terrace. As Arroyo is standing there, chunky little fellow, standing there, left-handed, ready to go now. Here he comes. Robinson fouled it against the backstop. Two balls, two strikes, two and two. Tomorrow's pitches will be Whitey Ford for the Yankees and Jim O'Toole for the Reds. Arroyo hesitates. Here he comes. That's outside. That brings it up to three and two. A three and two count on Robinson. No one out the bottom of the eighth inning. Score two to two. The official paid attendance today, officially paid here at Crosley Field, 32,589. The official paid attendance, 32,589. Royal stands. Stationary, taking his signs from Howard. Now he's ready. The left-hander pitches. Robinson struck out with a cut and miss. Six Cincinnati Reds have struck out today as Stafford struck out five of them. And Arroyo so far, the first man he faced. Gordy Coleman up there now. Coleman has had two hits today, two singles. The score is two to two. There's a, a pitcher's box conference there between Elston Howard and the pitcher Arroyo. You know, with the score tied at the moment, why Louis Arroyo has taken over the responsibility for the win or the loss. He could either be, right at this point, the winning pitcher or the losing pitcher. Now Coleman is up. Arroyo looks him over. Here he goes. There's Arroyo in action. Pitches. There's a foul ball up on the roof down in left field. So that's no balls and one strike. One away in the bottom of the eighth inning here in this third World Series game. The score is tied at two to two. Cincinnati two runs and seven hits. The Yankees two runs and five hits. The Yankees have made one error so far. The Reds have made none. So Arroyo in action. Pitches. That's outside, and that's one ball, one strike. One of each. Fleet Boyer, third. Well, the pitch now to Coleman is strike two. One ball, two strikes. The fastball in there. 
Boyer, the third baseman, is playing off the bag over towards shortstop somewhat. Kubek, the shortstop, has moved over towards second. Richardson, the second baseman, is playing a normal second. Scourin, normally in position at first, but he's playing deep. Barrow, the left fielder, is playing in left center. Mantle has shifted over to right center, a trifle. Maris is playing a normal right. So Arroyo working again. There's a pop-up. There's a foul behind the plate. Elston Howard is coming back after it. Made the catch, and there are two reds away in the eighth inning. The score is two to two. Wally Post up now. Post batting right-handed started the game with a World Series batting average of 429. He had three hits and seven turns. Today as yet, Post has not had a hit. There have been seven Cincinnati hits distributed. One to Chacon, two to Casco, a double by Robinson, two singles by Coleman, and a double by Johnny Edwards, the catcher. As the pitch now to Post. Post grounded a foul off to the right of the plate. Strike one. The Yankee hitter so far, Richardson, a single. Kubek, a single. Maris, Mantle, well, no hits as yet. Vera had a single. Howard, a double. And, of course, the all-important blow is that home run by Johnny Blanchett with two out in the eighth inning, which tied the score at 2-2, two to two, and it still remains at 2-2. Two to two. Arroyo pitching again. Post missed the breaking ball. No balls, two strikes. That was either a curve or a screwball. Difficult to see from here. We call it a breaking ball when we're just not positive of what it is. Nothing in two. So Arroyo, once again, taking the sign from Howard. The infield deep to the left now. Very deep in the infield and playing Post as a direct left field batter. So Arroyo pitching. That's outside. One ball, two strikes. One and two. One and two. Royal bends forward, taking the signals. Now he's winding, pitching. Post grounded a ball down to Boyer at third, who grabbed it through to first base, and Post is out at first, and the Reds are out in the eighth. In the eighth inning for Cincinnati, no one a base. In eight turns, the Reds have two runs and seven hits. And so at the end of the eighth inning, the score is New York two, and the Cincinnati Reds two. This is WGY, WGFM, Schenectady. Being played at Crosley Field in Cincinnati today. Roger Maris is the leadoff batter in the ninth inning as Perky pitches. Strike one call. The score is two to two. The Cincinnati Reds have had two runs and seven hits. The Yankees have had two runs and five hits. The Yankees have made one error, and the Reds have made none. The Yankees have left three men on. The Reds have left seven men on. As Perky in action, pitches to Maris. Maris took a low knuckle ball, and that's one ball, one strike, one of each. Maris batting left-handed. One on one, they're playing Maris at dead right field. Hit up, Henson is up on the terrace and center. The you fans unacquainted with Crosley Field. That's an incline that starts 25 feet short of the fences and rises gradually a uh, distance of about seven feet in the air. Another pitch now to Maris. That's high inside. Two balls and a strike. Two and one. Two balls, one strike. Frankie Crosetti is coaching at third base. Wally Moses at first base. Wally Moses was a Cincinnati batting coach in 1960. So Perky ready to go. Now he pitches. There's a ball hit in, out in right field, and there goes the home run for Roger Maris. His first hit of the series, and it's a home run. And the sixth home run hit by the Yankees in this World Series. Maris' first hit of the series. As he tagged one up in the right field seats, making the throw around the bases just across the plate to receive a handshake by Mickey Mantle. And the Yankees are leading 3-2. to two. That was the Yankee sixth hit. 
They have three runs and six hits. The Reds have two runs and seven hits. This is Mickey Mantle batting now, following Maris. As Perky pitching to Mantle, pitches the ball high outside. That was that was Maris. Third World Series home run, by the way. Home run number three for Maris in his total World Series. His first hit and first homer in this series. One ball, no strikes. Perky winding, pitching. He got it in there. That's strike one call. One and one. One ball, one strike. Perky's taking the signs from Bedwoods. Pitching again now. That's outside. Two balls and a strike. Two and one. For Mickey Mantle, the Cincinnati Reds play way around toward right field. With Freeze off at third. Castle, the shortstop, almost behind second. Last game, he's playing a normal second more or less. Coleman along the line behind first. There's a strike as Perky got it in there, and Maris took a, tr- uh, rather, Mantle took a tremendous ripple at the pitch, and he missed. Went all the way around with all his power. Two balls and two strikes. Wally Post, the left fielder, is playing over in front of the scoreboard. That's in left center field. Henson is playing more or less at, on a deadline from the home plate. He hasn't shifted a great deal. Robinson is up on the terrace in right field. Henry and Brosnan are warming up for the Reds down in their bullpen. Another pitch to Mantle. That's just off the plate. That's three balls. Strikes. Three and two. There is no one out in the top of the ninth inning here. The Yankees are leading the Reds three to two by virtues of two home runs in the eighth and ninth innings. Blanche's home run tied the score in the eighth. Maris' home run in the ninth put the Yankees ahead three to two. The Reds were leading two to one going into the top of the eighth inning. The pitch now to Mantle. Perky's third strikeout, by the way, with Yogi Berra coming up. Yogi walked in the second. He struck out in the fifth, and he hit a fly ball single in the right field in the seventh to drive in Quebec, who had singled earlier in the inning with the Yankees' first run. So the Yankees have scored. The Yankees have scored one run in the each of the seventh, eighth, and ninth innings, and the Yankees are leading in this game for the first time. Yogi Berra batting left-handed as Perky bending over, way over, arms dangling almost to the ground, ready to pitch now. He does. He throws to Berra. That's called the ball outside. Ball one. The Yankees have three runs, six hits, and an error, and the Reds have two runs, seven hits, no error. As Perky working again, throwing. That's inside. That's two balls, no strikes, two or nothing on Vera. Time is called as the ball got loose from the Reds' bullpen and rolled out on the playing field in left field. Two balls, no strikes. The Yankees leading three to two. One out in the top of the ninth inning here at Crosley Field. So, Perky pitches again. The ball is bounced foul down past Wally Moses. That's two balls and one strike. The Yankee power asserted itself here this afternoon. Blanchard, who has won a number of games for the Yankees with his home runs and hitting a great deal in the clutch. And, of course, that great home run hitter for the Yankees, Roger Maris, came through and they needed his home of the most in the top of the ninth inning here. The Yankees are leading 3-2. to two. One out on the ninth. Perky pitching to Berra. Berra took a cut and he rolled a foul to the backstop. Two balls, two strikes. Two and two. Perky 
like he shook the catcher off by waving his glove, by wiggling his glove. That means that's a shake-off sign. Now the pitch made to Berra. Berra took it outside. That was just off the plate for ball three. Three balls and two strikes. This Berra, he, uh, he has good eyes at the plate. Morrow's pitches, of course, are Whitey Ford for the Yankees and Jim O'Toole for the Reds. Three balls, two strikes. As Perky in action again. He delivers. There's a ball hit in the ground to Coleman, who flipped it off to Perky, who tagged first base, and Barra is out. The first baseman to the pitcher. The score is 3-2. to two. The Yankees are leading with two out on the top of the ninth inning. The Yankees with three runs, six hits, and an error. The Reds with two runs, seven hits, and no errors. The batter now is Elston Howard. He doubled off the center field fence back in the fifth inning. Now the Reds in field will go back for him. They're playing him very deep. All the way back now, especially with two away. He's a right-handed batter, Elston Howard. That left foot is up close to the plate. The right one dropped back. As Perky throws now outside... One ball, one and nothing on Howard. One ball, no strikes. Perky's bending forward, getting his signals again. Here he goes. He pitches. Strike one. I'll tip that one. One ball, one strike. Perky's taking signals again. He's winding, twisting around, throwing. Strike two. Howard chased a low knuckleball. One ball, two strikes. One, two. I would say for the most part that great part that this boy Edwards so far has been handling those knuckleballs of Perky. Pretty deftly. I mean, he's done a good job on that. That's a tough, tough pitch to, to catch. One ball, two strikes. Perky working, throwing. There's a ball bounced down to Coleman, who made a nice stop over near the line. Tossed again to Perky. And Howard is out of first. So in the ninth inning, the Yankees grabbed the lead on that home run by Roger Maris. The Yankees had in that inning one run. One hit, no one left on. They have three runs, six hits, and three left on to show for nine turns of bat. And the score right here, the New York Yankees have three runs, six hits, and one error. The Cincinnati Reds, two runs, seven hits, no errors. And now the Reds are faced with a tremendous task at the bottom end of their batting order coming up. The batting at... The bottom end coming up in Freeze, Edwards, and Perky. Consequently, there'll probably be some pinch hitters along the line here. And it will be perhaps Cardenas, who may bat for Edwards or Perky, one or the other. So we may be see some pinch hitters with Gurnett and those fellows coming up now. The paid attendance here today, 32589 32,589. So Louis Arroyo, the Yankee expert relief pitcher, the left-hander, is taking a few warm-up throws. The Yankee bullpen is a couple of right-handers warming up. Jim Brosnan has been warming up in the, in the Reds bullpen. So Gene Freeze is just scraping at the dirt. The umpire is dusting off the plate. The last of the ninth inning here at Crosley Field is about to start with the Yankees leading 3-2. to two. The Yankees have three runs and six hits. The Reds have two runs and seven hits. All right, here we go. The Yankee outfield playing very deep. Boyer, the third baseman, along the line somewhat. The pitch now to Freeze. Freeze called the ball. He hit a sort of a half-line drive into the box seats down the left field. No balls and one strike. Of course, you know that Freeze is 
going for the long. When he broke his bat on that one, that was a split bat foul. That... And the Cincinnati volunteer bugler down there behind first base playing charge. Breeze up. Arroyo taking the sides again from Elston Howard. Arroyo working. Pitching. That's inside. That's ball one and strike one on Freeze. One and one. Freeze has had not a hit today. He walked in the second. He flied out to left in the fourth. He flied out to left again in the seventh. The left fielder is Barra. So he flied out to Yogi a couple of times. Arroyo pitching. Freeze hit a fly ball out in left field, but there's another foul ball, and that's into the grandstand again, and there's another broken bat. So with two swings... Breeze has broken two bats. One ball, two strikes. The Yankees have three runs and six hits. The Cincinnati Reds, two runs and seven hits. The Reds were leading until the eighth inning when a home run by Blanchard tied the score. And then a home run by Roger Maris leading off the ninth inning put the Yankees out in front three to two. So Arroyo's Checking with his catcher again. Mantle up on the terrace and is, is in left center. Arroyo pitching. There's a ball bounce foul. It's rolled into the Cincinnati bench over there to the left. One ball and two strikes. They're giving freeze pretty much of center field. They're not covering that territory so much because they are they are confident that Freeze is trying to hit the ball off that screening atop the left field wall. Another pitch. Strike three. Yes. Through the fastball and Freeze took a cut and struck out. That's Arroyo second struck, strike out. And seven Cincinnati Reds have struck out today. The starting pitcher Bill Stafford struck out five Cincinnati Reds. Arroyo has fanned two. Now the battle will be Leo Cardenas. Cardenas is the battle. Cardenas has had no hits in the series so far. During the season, Cardenas batted 308 during the season. And in this series, he's been up once as a pitch hitter. The pitch to him now is low. Ball one. The New York Yankees, with one out on the bottom of the ninth, have three runs, six hits, and an error. The Cincinnati Reds have two runs, seven hits, no errors. As a Royal. Pitches, there's a ball driven out in deep left center, and it, it, it hit the scoreboard, and Carteris has a two-base hit. That ball curved around. It started for the flagpole, and had it not curved, it would have been over the center field fence, but the ball started a curve. It was aimed dead at the flagpole at left center at the 383-foot mark, and had it not curved, it would have gone over. There's a two-base hit for Cardenas as a pinch hitter. And it puts the tying run for the Reds on second base. The New York Yankees are leading 3-2 with one out in the bottom of the ninth inning. And Dick Gurnett is at the plate. He's been up once in this series, and it was on Gurnett that Boyer made that very brilliant stop. Gus Bell is on deck. The Gurnett batting in the ninth inning. One man out, the tying run on second for Cincinnati. The pitch to Gurnett is inside low, ball one. So the fans are all excited here now, and promptly so. Gardner's on second base. The Yankee outfield playing Gurnett as a dead left field hitter. The infield deep to the left. Another pitch to Gurnett. Gurnett took it outside low. Two balls and no strike. Flashing game is due at the plate after Gurnett, but Gus Bell has the bat in the batter circle. One out in the bottom of the ninth inning. The pitch down to Gurnett. Gurnett grounded a foul down to Otero, coaching at third base. 
They, with one out in the bottom of the ninth inning, the New York Yankees have three runs, six hits, and an error. The Cincinnati Reds, two runs, eight hits, and no errors. Two balls and a strike on Gernot as Arroyo hooks his batter over. The left hander ready to pitch. He does. That's too low, and that's ball three. Three balls and a strike. Three and one on Gernot. Studying his batter now. Three and one count on the batter. The pitch to the plate. The ball bounced over the head of the pitcher. Out toward back of second. The throw to first. Turn it is out at first base. Just out. And Cardenas did not dare to come over to third. He remained at second as Kubek went over back of second. Made a fine play and got turned it at first base. Two away now for Cincinnati. And Gus Bell is the man right now who stands between the Cincinnati Reds and a possible loss. The Yankees have three runs and six hits. The Reds have two runs and eight hits. Gus Bell is the batter, batting for flashing game. Chacon is still at second. This is Bell's first time at bat in the series. During the season, Gus Bell batted 255 with three home runs and 33 runs batted in. Bell batting left handed, caught in a on second, two out, the bottom of the ninth. The pitch to Gus, Gus hit a ball off the hand of Arroyo. Arroyo picked it up to the first, the game is over, and the Yankees have won the third game of the World Series, three to two. And so the final score is the New York Yankees, three runs, six hits, one error. The Cincinnati Reds, two runs, eight hits, and no errors. In a moment, we'll review the highlights of the game for you. Don't miss your chance to win a brand new 62 Chrysler Corporation car. Stop in at your dealers now and sign up to win one during October open house. Plymouth, Valiant, Dodge Dart, Lancers, Chrysler's Imperial. 180 brand new cars are offered free, and one of them may be yours. If you own a car, any make or model, any year, all you have to do to qualify is come in, see the complete rules, and register with any authorized dealer who sells Plymouth, Valiant, Dodge, Lancer, Chrysler, or Imperial. That's all there is to it, and you may win one of 180 beautiful 1962 Chrysler Corporation cars. But be sure to register at your dealers by October 31st. You can't win unless you do. Free car offer void in Nebraska, Wisconsin, Florida, Canada, and wherever else prohibited by law. Looks like it's gonna be a And now Bob Wolf will review the highlights of the game for you. Right way. And there are some strange and unusual proceedings in this afternoon's thriller all the way. Strange but true is the fact that Roger Maris, with his first hit of the series, won the ball game for the New York Yankees with a ninth inning homer. They give the Yankees their 3-2 to two victory. And also, unusual and certainly exciting to all the fans is the fact that Cardenas almost tied the ball game with a long blast which was high up off the scoreboard. It started out as it was going over that 18-foot wall but it curved and hit up, oh, let's say about 48 feet or 50 feet up against that 55-foot scoreboard and toppled down into play, and Cardenas ended up with a two-base hit. That was close, but not quite close enough, as the Yankees once again used their home run strength first to tie the ball game with a Blanchett pinch hit home run, and then Maris, who had gone 0 for 10 in the series, and in the seventh that hit the ball of the infield for the first time, showed that he was now drawing a bead on those right field seats by coming up in the ninth and putting one up into 
the sun deck for the home run, which won the ball game three to two. It made a winning pitcher out of Louis Arroyo in relief, and it was a heartbreaking loss for Bob Perky. Arroyo had been preceded by Stafford, who started, and Daly, who came on in the seventh. Arroyo in the eighth, and Perky was the loser. Another well-pitched ball game by both sides, and perhaps one might note that the New York Yankees now have a total of seven runs in the series, and with a total of seven, lead two games to one. So they've had maximum use out of their runs. And all of their runs so far in the series, except one this afternoon, the result of home runs. Here's how the scoring went today. In the uh, ball game, the first run went to Cincinnati. That came on the bottom half of the third inning. It came with Helio Chacon, who's been one of the standouts, coming up with a punt single. The throw by Stafford was wild pass first base, and Chacon moved on to second. He moved over to third on Pinson's ground out and scored on Robinson's last which was up against the base of the wall in deep left field, driving in the first run for Cincinnati this afternoon. So the Reds led 1-0 at the end of the third, but the Yankees came back to tie in the top of the seventh. Kubek led off the inning with a single move to second on a pass ball, and then Ferris sent a ball in the short, a right field. Chacon went racing back. Robinson came in. Chacon just barely did get his glove on it. Robinson was coming in. Chacon tumbled to the ground as Kubek came over to uh, score on the base hit to make it a 1-1 ball game. In the bottom half of the seventh, Eddie Casco put the Reds back in front by a score of 2-1. And incidentally, three times now the Yankees have given up intentional walks. Three times it's backfired. Twice in New York Thursday when Gene Fries was walked to get to Johnny Edwards. Today when left hitter pinch hitter Johnny, uh, Jerry Lynch was walked to get to right-hander Casco, he came through with a hit to give the Reds their temporary lead. But then Blanchett came up in the eighth inning as a pinch hitter, and on the first pitch got a pinch hit home run to tie the ball game at 2-2, and then Maris leading off the ninth got his home run, and that proved to be the winning run by a score of 3-2 in the ball game. So that's the story, and tomorrow will be Whitey Ford against Jim O'Toole as the excitement continues then. That wraps up the third 1961 World Series game. Our engineer has been Harry Alexander. Our producer, Len Dillon. And now this is Bob Wolf speaking for Wait Hoyt.